Hello, I am Masayasu Horibe and I am an assistant professor at Keio University in Japan. Hi, and I'm Fata Bazubachi, an assistant in medicine at Massachusetts General Hospital and instructor at Harvard Medical School. We are co-authors of a recent study published in GIE titled The Horibe GI Bleeding Prediction Score, a simple score for triage decision-making in patients with suspected upper GI bleeding. We are grateful for the opportunity to discuss with you our prospective study. Dr. Horibe, what is our study about? Our study validates a recently developed simple scoring system in patients with suspected upper GI bleeding called the Harbinger, which stands for Horibe Gastrointestinal Bleeding Prediction Score. This system was incepted in 2016. In the present study, we prospectively validated the Harbinger in almost 1,500 patients. When compared with the GBS and the N65, the Harbinger is significantly more accurate in predicting the presence of endoscopic high risk stigmata upon endoscopy. Dr. Horibe, to the best of my knowledge, the Harbinger is the only score designed to predict the presence of high risk stigmata before endoscopy is undertaken in patients suspected to have an upper GI bleed. Can you tell us in more depth about the components of the Harbinger? The way to calculate the Harbinger is quite simple and it provided 100% sensitivity when we set the cutoff one in the development cohort. The Harbinger consists of only three variables, each scoring plus one point, the absence daily PPI use in the week before the index presentation, a shock index, namely heart rate bar, systolic blood pressure more than and equal one, and BUN bar creatinine more than and equal 30. Therefore, the score ranges from zero to three. In a recent American College of Physicians guideline published in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2019, the general recommendation was that all patients with acute non variceal upper GI bleed should undergo endoscopy within 24 hours of presentation. Why do you think further risk stratification is warranted and what is the role of the harbinger in this context? Performing an urgent endoscopy within 24 hours for all suspected upper GI bleed patients can be challenging due to the limited healthcare resources. On the other hand, Concerns have always been raised regarding to early endoscopy in GI bleed patients. Therefore, we have to carefully triage patients who require an urgent endoscopy intervention. Moreover, there is data to suggest that patients who do not need urgent endoscopy can be treated as outpatients even if they require a blood transfusion. According to international consensus statement, the presence of high risk stigmata during the endoscopy indicates the need for therapeutic intervention. Therefore, when it comes to making a decision whether to scope or not, predicting the presence of high risk stigmata is a very meaningful outcome with solid implication for patients. Dr. Horibe, to me, this sounds logical. I can only see the benefit of an upper endoscopy in a patient with suspected upper GI bleed if there is a lesion that would benefit from an endoscopic intervention. What were the methods of our study and can you briefly summarize our results? To validate the Harbinger prospectively, we enrolled consecutive patients presenting with suspected upper GI bleeding in three acute care Japanese hospitals between 2012 and 2015. Recruitment centers were a mix between reality, non-reality, community, and university hospitals. Upon presentation to the emergency setting, the endoscopy was performed in a timely fashion. The determination of high-risk stigmata was adjudicated by showing the endoscopic images of all encountered regions to expert endoscopists blinded to the clinical information of patients. Of 1,486 enrolled patients, 43% of patients harbored high-risk endoscopic stigmata. As shown here, the area under the curve of the harbinger was 0.76, which was significantly greater than the GBS and the M65 for predicting the high-risk stigmata. 
This figure shows the sensitivity and specificity for every cutoff for each score. The highlighted part shows the cutoff for each score with highest sensitivity. The Harbinger and GBS have high sensitivity for the cutoff at one. Both score can be used to manage suspected upper GI bleeding patients as outpatient. However, the Harbinger obviates the need for multiple other variables for calculation. Next, the highlighted part shows the best cutoff for each score. We can use these cutoffs to predict the need for urgent endoscopy. It is not surprising to me that the Harbinger performs better than the Blatchford and AIM-65 in predicting high-risk stigmata, given that these latter scores were designed for composite outcomes. Composite outcomes amelioration is not only a function of treating a bleeding lesion endoscopically, but is likely a function of all hospitalization management efforts, including adequate resuscitation and initiation of proton pump inhibitors. How do you see the harbinger being implemented in clinical practice? As you know, we propose that patients with harbinger of zero could be outpatient. Those with one should be admitted for observation without the need for urgent endoscopy, and that those with two or three require urgent endoscopy after optimal resuscitation. However, it must be noted that the Habita is a unique and simple scoring system to predict the need for urgent endoscopy, especially in upper GI breeding rather than other diseases. For example, Harbinger would not risk stress by mortality from terminal cancer and the concomitant minor GI bleeding if the patient perished due to cancer. In a real clinical setting, outpatient management using the Harbinger should also include an evaluation for the presence of other disease processes such as cancer, sepsis, etc. When other comorbidities will likely contribute to mortality, using a score that is dedicated to predict a composite outcome such as the GBS may be desired. However, an endoscopy is unlikely to be of use to improve such mortality in the absence of high-risk stigmata. Indeed, although the ultimate endpoint is mortality, this should not automatically mean offering endoscopy without a likelihood of intervenable lesion, given that overall mortality is a function of many variables. The Harbinger's strength may stem from its ability to provide the clinician with the likelihood that a high-risk stigmata lesion is present and that needs endoscopy. This is exactly our purpose. The Harbinger specializes in selecting patients with the need for endoscopic intervention. It is crucial for triage on-call physicians to predict the utility of endoscopic intervention. Another interesting peculiarity of the Harbinger is that it is agnostic to hemoglobin levels. Can you shed some light on this aspect? The fact that hemoglobin is not included in the index is a feature of Harbinger. The low value of hemoglobin is not surrogate of endoscopic urgency, as it can also be caused by chronic disease. This is an important point that needs emphasis. We found that blood transfusion was associated with worse outcome only in those patients who harbored high-risk endoscopic stigmata. Indeed. Furthermore, we are not interested in a score that predicted the need for blood transfusion, given that this need is rigidly detected by the certain hemoglobin cutoff, depending on comorbidities or vital signs. There is not much yield of developing a score that predicts such a need. I recall that one of the comments we received from one of the reviewers is that although the area under the curve of the harbinger is superior, it would appear that having a Blatchford score of less than or equal four would be similarly sensitive in predicting those with presumed upper GI hemorrhage in whom endoscopic high-risk stigmata are subsequently identified. Dr. Horibe, why then should our score, the harbinger, be adopted for triage? Well, it's true that when all variables of the GBS were available, the GBS can be sensitive to predict those with high risk stigmata at a certain cutoff. The GBS calculation is cumbersome, while the Harbinger is a simple score consisting of three relatively obtained variables. Furthermore, the Harbinger has a better AUC in the ROC curve. The Harbinger can be relatively applied not only the 
by gastroenterologists, but also by AD physicians, whether in developed countries, but also developing countries where the immediate access for an online calculation is not available. Indeed, simplicity is always advantageous, and less is sometimes more. The hanbingan consists of only three variables, and the cutoffs are also easy to memorize. Moreover, the calculation is simple and clinical decision by the harbinger is clear and streamlined. Moreover, the scoring system is valid regardless of the whether the source of breed is variable or non variable which is important since the definition is uncertain in the endoscopic phase. I think this is an important point that's worth three emphasis, especially in the era of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, obesity, and rising incidence of occult advanced fibrosis. A score agnostic to the presumption of end-stage liver disease or cirrhosis is likely advantageous. Dr. Horibe, what are the limitations of our study and what is the next direction of our research? First, also endoscopic hematostasis improves the outcome in patients with high-risk stigmata. Whether urgent endoscopic hematostasis would improve the mortality is unclear. A randomized clinical trial allocating patients according to their harbinger may answer the question. Second, we have to evaluate the impact of using Harbinger in the context of patient prognosis. In particular, we believe that patients with Harbinger of zero can be managed on an outpatient basis, but the present study is not designed to validate the downstream effect of passing this management. It is necessary to carefully verify how to use this for in clinical practice. Third, the Harbinger should be tested in various populations, not just Japanese patients. As you know, we are planning to conduct a multi center research in the U.S. to validate our findings. Thank you, Dr. Horibe. And on behalf of all our co-authors, I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for giving us the platform to share our findings and thank the viewers for their time and attention. Thank you.